buoyancy is the tendency for things to float. Things like this balloon or this ball in water. But it doesn't float on its own. But it doesn't float on its own. The helium is less dense than the air molecules around it. And they fall past the balloon and push it up. The ball is less dense than the water around it. So the water molecules flow around the ball and push it up. This happens because water is a fluid. The particles flow around each other. This works because air is a fluid. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, air isn't a fluid, but it is. Usually we think of fluid as meaning a liquid, but in this case, fluid means anything where the particles can flow around each other, and that includes air. But you know what? It's hard to see the particles in water. Same thing with air. I can say it, but it's really hard to see it. Now, um, yeah. Now this is sand, and it behaves like a fluid too. Well, sort of, check it out. Look, it's made of a whole bunch of very fine particles, and it takes the shape of its container. But watch this. I put a ball in the sand, and it doesn't float. Now the ball is less dense than the sand, but it doesn't float because the particles of sand have a little bit too much friction right now. But watch as we move them around and reduce the friction by adding some air. Now, the sand is behaving like a fluid, and the ball floats. Let's see what else floats on sand. How about this pumpkin? Yup, that floats. How about this block of wood? Yup, that floats too. How about this styrofoam ball? Yeah, that definitely floats. Look at that. The sand is a fluid right now because all of the little particles of sand are moving around. But watch this, if I turn off the air, everything freezes in place. Nothing floats anymore because the sand is no longer behaving like a fluid. So there you go, buoyancy. It all depends on the density of the thing and the fluid it's surrounded by. Huh? Science. You want the best material around? Well, you come to the right place. I've got them all. I got you Flubberoid. Magnoplex. Flexoweed. Pastotherm. Blupifo. You need hydrogelatinous substrate? I got it. But you know, all those fancy materials are nothing compared to the good old fashioned spider web. Huh? It. Hey, where's Gary? Ramona, Gary got away again. You know, people ask me, Sal, is it true spider webs are stronger than steel? And I tell them, it depends. When you look at a rope or a thread or a fiber, you talk about its tensile strength or its ability to withstand force before breaking. <laughs> but you're comparing different things, so you have to compare them by thickness. So if you're comparing a steel cable to a spider web of the same thickness, then yes, steel is stronger. But spider web is six times lighter than steel. So if you are measuring strength to weight, spider web wins every time. Gary! So why don't we build more things with spider web? Well, for one thing, it's sticky and difficult to work with. Almost finished knitting the spider web sweater. It's only gonna take me about 80 more hours. And it's not easy to train spiders. Okay, Steven, one long, non-sticky thread and you get a cookie, okay? And, hey, uh, where's Marco? And Petunia. Huh. But no need to train spiders now because modern science has surpassed the spider web. Enter carbon nanotubes. Huh? This thread doesn't look like much, but it is made of tiny little tubes made of carbon atoms. Think of them like a straw. But a really long straw. Carbon nanotubes are incredibly light and strong. Remember when we compared strength to weight? Well, steel is heavy. Spider web is about six times stronger by weight, and carbon nanotube is about 50 times stronger than that. That's so 
Great. So why aren't we making everything out of carbon nanotubes? I'm gonna knit a carbon nanotube sweater. Well, first we have to make them cheaply enough to be affordable. There you go. One carbon nanotube sweater. $480,000. But material scientists all over the world are hard at work trying to find ways to make carbon nanotubes faster and cheaper. And soon, they'll be everywhere. And then spiders can go back to spinning their webs in peace. There you are, Gary. Well, where's everybody else? With Petunia and Marco and... What do you mean they're in my jacket? <laughs> We've tried air surfers of all shapes and sizes. And what have we learned? Maxing out an air surfer by like making it bigger is really difficult. Very difficult, yeah. yeah. So what we've decided to do is go back to our original big mouth tumblewing and instead do it on a maxed out obstacle course. Tumblewing surfing round three, the maxed out obstacle course. Let's take a look at the obstacles, the tree slalom, the podium ramp, the hanging hoop, ring walk, wall of boxes, ladder tunnel, side hoop, ball promenade, and the barrel run. So here's how we play. Uh, I go through and then you follow me. And if you make it through an obstacle and your tumblewing's still in the air, you get a point. And at the end, we count how many points we have and we see who won. And it looks like they're ready to start. Here we go! Okay, what do I do with the boxes? What do I do with the boxes? Going through the boxes! <laughs> Definitely didn't make that one. Recover! 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 Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, no! <sighs> okay, definitely lost a point there. the air surfer in the air? Well, the trick is to give it just the right amount of air to keep it in control. Not too fast and not too slow. That's the science to good tumblewing flying. So with the points from the last round added up, Team Phil and Team Lisa are tied again. You know what that means? Tiebreaker! <laughs> Thanks very much for watching Science Max Experiments at Large Tumblewings. You want to go first this I time? I do. Let's do it. Okay, you go first this time, and then I'll follow you. I think it's easier to go first. So, okay, ready? Yeah. Hey, Mark, set, go. <laughs> Hey, Cynthia! Hey, Phil. Cynthia, going? from the Ontario Science Centre, you're going to help me max out the Science Experiments and Diet Science Cola experiment. Yeah. I, I think we need a better name for this. Okay, well, we have the mints that have tiny little pores called nucleation sites on them. The gas inside the cola is going to go through these nucleation sites, create a giant fountain. Uh huh. So why don't we call it a nucleation fountain? Ooh, nucleation fountain. I like that. It's it's accurate and it sounds awesome. There we go. Okay, so uh, we want to max it out. So how many should we put in? Let's say five more nucleation sites. More reaction. Ah. I tried adding more mints, but one at a time didn't work. It doesn't. No. It's not. It, the bubbles are pushing it back out again. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> and then, yeah, I think if we put them all in at the same time, it would work better. So we came up with a delivery mechanism to get all the mints in at the same time. A tube with a magnet holding the mints up, which we screw onto the top of the bottle. Pull the outside magnet to release, and... Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good fountain. That is a, a good, good nucleation fountain. Nucleation fountain worked very well. There we go. Cynthia and I decided to try some other ideas to max it out even more. We decided to do some... Experimentation. Experimentation. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Yep. And see if Diet Cola was the best carbonated drink to use. We tried four different kinds. Diet Cola, 
regular cola, lemon lime soda, and club soda. It's really soda. just? It's just carbonated water. Carbonated water. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. Oh! Oh! oh, science cola! <laughs> science cola, but I think that uh, it was close. I think it was the release. Let's watch the replay. Okay. Yep, diet science cola went the highest. So the next step is maybe if we want to max the size of the fountain, we have to make a narrower stream. Ooh, so um, a smaller aperture opening will be higher pressure. That's what I'm thinking. Because it'll be forced at a smaller opening. What else can we do? We can launch it. We could launch, well, you mean like sideways? Yeah. Yeah, I love that idea. So we'll put it on wheels. We'll put it on wheels. Okay. And then we'll launch it sideways. Okay. These are, we have a lot of things to do. Okay, let's get. We need time, let's do it. Get to it, okay, okay. we'll go to the lab. I'll get a mop 